Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. This is Dr. R. Karthikeyan doing MD General Medicine at MAPSI. So today we'll be continuing with our clinical cardiology series where we'll be discussing chest pain history taking in detail. Okay, let's go. Yes, so here we will be discussing the cardiovascular causes of chest pain initially followed by non-cardiac causes of chest pain. Okay, so first is how to take a proper history in case of chest pain. The mnemonic which we follow is Socrates. S for side, O for onset, C for character, R for radiation, A for associated features, T for time frame, E exaggerating relieving factors and S for severity. So first we will take an example of an MA patient, acute coronary syndromes which includes unstable angina as well as acute myocardial infarction. How is um, MA pain presence? First, the site of the chest pain is mostly it's a retrosternal chest pain and how is the onset of the pain? See, the pain will be like it starts 2 to 10 minutes and it's progressive in nature. That's the valuable point because it is crescendo in nature, they will say, meaning it increases as time passes. Okay, this indicates a myocardial infarction. Okay, next is character of the pain. How about the character of the pain in case of acute coronary syndrome? It's like most patients won't say it has a pain. Instead, they say it has a heaviness over the chest. Some weight is kept over my chest. I can't breathe because it's tight, choking, or it's pressing like in nature. Most of the patients will complain this complaint. Then, what about the radiation? It's very important with respect to anginal pain because this pain starts in the substernal region, retrosternal region, radiates to both uh, radiates to the neck and it might radiate even to the jaw as well as the teeth. Okay, next it might radiate to both arms as well as shoulders and hands. So as we know in left hand it radiates to the ulnar border of the left hand. At the same time it can also radiate to the epigastrium and left sided precordium. Okay, so what Braunwald's textbook says is the chest pain radiated to both arms and both shoulders is more characteristic of MI than chest pain radiating to the left hand and left arm. Okay, this will be uh, interesting. But at the same time, what you should know is they have found like pains originating from the epigastrium and radiating to the jaw and neck is mostly they don't involve the left anterior descending artery. They have found out this. At the same time, pain originating from the retrosternal region and radiating towards the left part of the chest and left, left hand and left arm, left shoulder, ulnar border, mostly involves the left coronary artery. This is the clinical finding which they were observed. Next, what I want to say is associated features. What associated features you can find? One is nausea, vomiting, sweating and tachycardia. Patients feel palpitations there. So we would have heard a term known as silent MI where it is common in elderly as well as diabetes mellitus patients. What happens here? Due to neuropathy, this sympathetic features are not seen like nausea, vomiting, sweating, tachycardia. But still in these patients, one activity is preserved. What is that? These patients won't feel that pain. Pain won't be there. But still they will have excessive diaphoresis or sweating because it is mediated by acetylcholine receptors. So this activity alone is preserved in these patients. So these patients will preserve present like excessive diaphoresis or sweating. So that cases don't miss out elderly as well as diabetic patients. That might be a silent MI. Next time frame. What time frame? Like if he, if he is a case of old coronary artery disease patient, then we can ask him to compare the nature of the pain. Like previously when he had MI, was the pain same nature or is it different? You can have a great idea with, it, with respect to that clinically. At the same time, if he has a history, like if he has some leg swellings or DVT, then you can suspect more towards chest pain means pulmonary embolism you can suspect. At the same time, if the patient has an old case of COPD or some bullous lung disorders, sudden onset of chest pain, now you can suspect of some pneumothorax going on. So like this, with time frame, we can have a good idea of what's going on with the patient. Then what is the exaggerating factors? As we know, cardiac chest pains exacerbate by 
exertion as well as anginal pain exacerbated by cold as well as stress or after heavy meal also at the same time here if you notice a point like at night what happens is this pains tend to aggravate why because at night sympathetic outflow is very much reduced so the diastolic pressure blood pressure is reduced coronary is depend more on the diastolic blood flow so since the diastolic pressure is reduced blood flow to the coronary is reduced okay decrease blood flow to the coronaries so at that time if the coronaries are already at like fixed occlusion then this might aggravate the angina leading to mi so only we say mi's occur mostly in night or early morning okay next what about relieving factors as we know cardiovascular uh, pain anginal pain relieved by rest or sublingual trinitroglycerin but if you take three times sublingual trinitroglycerin not relieved means that is characteristic of it's going towards acs acute coronary syndrome which is unstable angina or myocardial infarction okay next is severity yes it will be progressively increasing in severity okay so this is the nature of acute coronary syndrome pain mi pain okay next is we will be dealing with other cardiovascular cause of chest pain what is this any sudden onset severe chest pain and a patient is a case of uncontrolled hypertension you can think of should definitely rule out this emergency cause which is aortic dissection so what happens here it's nothing but this is the aorta there is a tear in the intimal layer leading to percolation of blood through the false lumen so if it is involving only the ascending aorta as in debakie classification 2 what will happen the chest pain will be localized to the site will be substernal chest pain retrosternal chest pain radiating only to the jaw and the teeth neck so this pain will be maximal at onset sudden onset chest pain and maximal at onset at the same time this pain how is it catter it's tearing the blood vessels so it is tearing in nature at the same time if the dissection origin is starting from the ascending aorta and it's if it is involves the entire part of aorta or if it starts after the origin of all the three main branches it if it involves the descending aorta then the chest pain will be like it starts from the chest and it progresses from the neck and it goes behind the back that two characteristic region is interscapular region interscapular region progressing to the back as well as to the lower limbs even to the lower limbs it can progress this kind of dissection so then definitely aggravated by exertion relieving factor is since uncontrolled hypertension is the cause so you should treat hypertension acutely by giving a short acting ultra short acting beta blocker which is iv esmolol okay then you should consider him for surgery at the same time severe is maximum severity at onset okay next is what is the chest pain other cause of cardiovascular which is fluid accumulating around the heart irritating the pericardium leading to pericardial chest pain pericarditis so site of chest pain is pericardium is in the left as well as center part of the chest so the pain is also in the center as well as towards the left sided uh, pericardium and what about the character it's also like they call it as lancinating in type like like a blade scratching with the blade how it produces a pain like that it causes also severe pain what about the radiation radiation is interesting with respect to acute pericarditis you know why because when you deep in when you have a deep inspiration what happens your lungs expand and cover the pericardium and irritate the pericardium so deep inspiration as well as coughing will irritate the pericardium leading to exacerbation of pain at the same time if you lie supine position what happens your heart is compressed in the vertebral column and the sandwiching layer is pericardium so pericardium is maximally compressed so that also irritates causing pain so increase during supine position. so what is the position to relieve the pain it's like they kneel forward catching their heart chest so if they kneel forward what happens is that pain reduces so the a posture they assume is also known as they called as mohammadi praying position okay next is with respect to valvular disorders of the heart which is more important with respect to fine layers mbbs so in mitral valve prolapse can pain occur just by yeah possible because in mitral valve prolapse on papillary muscle is trained hard to prevent the aversion of cusp 
but still aversion is suffering leading to prolapse. So papillary muscle undergoes strain, this strain might happen anytime. So this pain is like they are not at all allotted with exertion at all. It can occur at even at rest or any time. And this pain is similar to anginal pain because papillary muscle is also a component of myocardium. At the same time, the uh, site of pain will be retrosternal. Okay, in aortic stenosis, what happens? To the stenotic valve, only a little amount of blood is pumped normally. When you exert yourself, then what happens? Your left ventricle is already hypertrophy in aortic stenosis. So the blood flow can't match the hypertrophic blood ventricle leading to chest pain. So only we have a classical trial known as exertion induced chest pain, exertion induced syncope, exertion induced shortness of breath. It is relieved by rest, taking rest. Next, aortic regurgitation, only one thing you should remember, uh, because in aortic regurgitation, what happens is, the pain is exacerbated in night. They have a characteristic feature known as nocturnal angina. Do you know why? Same reason. In night, decreased sympathetic outflow. So, so coronaries are not filled, leading to chest pain. Okay, nocturnal angina is common in aortic regurgitation. Nice. Next, we will be seeing a non-cardiac cause of chest pain. What are it? So, how to identify it? Usually, if you see, the onset of these pains will be like less than 20 seconds or it will be lasting for hours or days. Okay, at the same time, can you localize it? Yes, you can localize it very well. But a chest pain of myocardial infarction is diffuse in nature. There's the patient assume this posture, like they will have a center of the fist opening uh, to the compressed to the center of the chest, they will be complaining of chest pain. Okay, but here they can able to localize the chest pain. At the same time, cat and radiation we will be seeing with the causes. Okay. So first is with respect to we can uh, learn with the first come up starting from the external features. In the skin, due to herpes zoster, what happens is there is blisters as well as these crust form over the skin leading to chest pain. But the characteristic feature is the chest pain occurs even before the rash originates. So that is somewhat tricky. At the same time, next is there is idiopathic swelling of this costochondral junctions. The two second and third costochondral junctions will be swollen. So that syndrome is known as teeth syndrome. Okay, there they will have swelling as well as tenderness. Tenderness swelling means it is localized. So it differentiates it from myocardial pain. At the same time, myalgias can also produce pain. There also we, they might have tenderness. Okay, next is GA cause of pain. Why are we saying about GA causes? Because as we know, many myocardial pains might originate from the epigastrium and radiate upward. First is esophageal spasm disorders, spasmodic disorder of esophagus. So not cracker esophagus, all those. So what is the characteristic feature is, if ask the patient to swallow, they will reproduce the pain. So that is a good differentiating feature. And if the esophagus is ruptured, spontaneous rupture of esophagus or this Boerhaave syndrome we know, that will also produce retrosternal heartburn as well as heart chest pain. At the same time, if it is GERD, they will also have that heartburn as well as it is like exacerbated with food intake. And after taking food, if the patient lies supine position, this pain exacerbates. So these are the clues to differentiate it from cardiac chest pain. Then, as we know, peptic ulcer disease, same thing. Next, see, this biliary duct undergoes spasm. This is biliary colic. So what happens in biliary colic is, after eating a fatty food, because fat is digested, digested by the bile secreted by the gallbladder. So what happens is the fat, after eating fatty food, this pain starts to happen after two to four hours. And this pain will be constant in nature and it's severe, constant in nature. And after four hours, it will be automatically resolved. Okay, that is one more clue for biliary colic. Then acute pancreatitis, same acute onset, severe epigastric pain that is relieved by this prayer position. Okay, they will have severe nausea and vomiting. If you give them food, they will definitely have severe increase in pain. So that is also a good uh, feature, differentiating feature with cardiac chest pain. Next, most important respiratory causes. So one thing you should know, this is pleuritic chest pain. Some uh, fluid filling the pleural cavity leading to chest pain. So this pain will be 
exacerbated on inspiration because on inspiration what happens the lung expands and glides over the pleura leading to chest pain at the same time if you ask the patient breath hold don't breathe at, the, at that time there is no gliding of pleura over the lungs so no pain so this differentiates it from the pericardial chest pain so even if you breath hold in pericarditis heart will be beating continuously it will be irritating with the uh, heart heart will be irritating the pericardium so pain will be there but in pleural pain if you ask the patient to breath hold that time pain disappears so that's differentiate from pericardial pain next they will have they might have sputum fever cough all these are facing towards more of respiratory cause then important emergency condition which you should remember is one is acute pulmonary embolism and spontaneous pneumothorax what happens is in a patient with some dvt what happens is massive pulmonary embolism obstructs this main pulmonary artery leading to severe pain which is similar to mi okay at the same time if you auscultate no findings will be there we call it as a silent chest because there is no finding absolutely no finding will be there and shortness of the patient will have severe shortness of breath severe chest pain and saturation will be dropping and pao2 will be dropping and if you auscultate it will be clearly normal and if you take an ecg they might see a tachycardia as well as the s1 q3 t3 pattern so it's best if you do a ctp pulmonary angiography with the embolism next is pneumothorax what happens is a patient a case of some copd uh, or bullous disorders what happens is suddenly this bulla or something ruptures leading to accumulation of air leading to spontaneous pneumothorax that also has a severe on sudden onset chest pain shortness of breath and if you auscultate there is air na so hyper resonance will be there at the same time if you auscultate there will be absent breath sounds will be there okay thus you can differentiate from mi next is actually mi can occur like we told radiation of pain to different areas so mi can occur isolated in the like arm pain neck pain so that is also you should be able to find out how because you should be able to have a differential diagnosis of neck pain related to arm those are cervical radiopathy and thoracic outlet syndrome in cervical radiopathy what happens is it is neurogenic pain it is due to compression of the nerve roots in the cervical exit vertebra so leading to pain so there is a radiculopathy it will be radiating to that part of the uh, area where it is supplies at the same time if you ask the patient to extend his neck pain reproduces or ex exacerbates at the same time if you have if you palpate those areas the patient might have tenderness so extension will cause the pain it's a radicular pain neck movements will exacerbate the pain okay next is thoracic outlet syndrome it is due to compression of those vascular structures leading to neck and arm pain so here doesn't relate with spinal extension here how it will be this is due to compression of the subclavian artery right subclavian artery so it might cause symptoms like vascular claudication like if you use the arm more the pain will be there it is related with arm movements at the same time if it is severe occlusion of vessels it might result in cold intolerance paler and if one artery is compressed more than if right is compressed more than the left then it produces pulse difference as well as bp difference in both two arms so thus you can differentiate from neurogenic cause that's it we have discussed all the causes of possible cause of chest pain at the same time how to differentiate it from mi okay so that's it we'll be discussing palpitations and sinusoidal cup tomorrow so thanks for watching it